It's always nice when you see a mini PC do something different. There's only so many 4x4 inch boxes I can look at before they blur together and I start tearing out whatever remaining hair I have left. The Minis Forum Elite Mini HX90 is a vertical standing box that's larger than your average Mini. Most importantly, it's got plenty of grunt and stays pretty quiet. So, it makes a great desktop replacement or emulation box. The HX90 comes with a Ryzen 9 5900HX, which is an 8 core 16 thread AMD processor. It features Vega integrated graphics. Memory goes up to 3200MHz with DDR4 sodium. There's an M.2 Gen 3 NVMe slot and two 2.5 inch SATA for storage. This mini comes in at 600 US dollars for a bare bones unit. That's cheaper than a gallon of gas. Oh, and it comes with a two year warranty. In the box is a 120 watt power supply, HDMI cable, monitor mount, and stand. That's everything you need. Wait a minute. Memory, storage, OS, keyboard, mouse, monitor. Almost everything you need. Build quality is solid. Although it does feel like it's mostly plastic. Is it really a carbon fiber composite material? I don't think it's the coolest looking unit, but I definitely wouldn't say it's ugly. At least it looks better than the PlayStation 5. You can buy a fully pre-built unit if you don't like opening stuff up and getting your hands dirty. But with the bare bones, all you need to add is memory, storage, and install your OS. And yes, Linux is supported. It's four screws before you can open her up. Rip the lid off as she needs a bit of force and start unscrewing the SSD mounting plate. Disassembly prohibited. That only makes me want to do it more. Anyway, dip your fingers into that rear end and then flip the board towards the front I.O. Don't you dare break that ribbon cable. I'm serious. Don't make me slap you. I'm using 16 gigs of 3200 memory. And you can also see there's a CMOS battery, VRM heatsink, and the fan sink, which is held together with liquid metal. Just like in Terminator 2. You don't want to let the T-1000 out, so just leave it be. Once memory is installed, it's time for storage, which bumps uglies with the Wi-Fi card. Then seal her up and hope that the silicon operation was a success. Now she's ready for work, especially with a clear CMOS button, 5 USB 3 ports, a USB-C, dual mic and headphone jacks, dual HDMI 2.0 and DisplayPort for up to 4 4K monitors at 60Hz. Oh, and a 2.5 gigabit LAN. She even comes with Wi-Fi 6 and Bluetooth so you can keep in touch. Yeah baby. Fire up with Windows 11 and benchmark time. There's no good Intel comparison here, so I'll just use the NUC 11 Enthusiast, which is a much pricier unit. It's also vertical, so there's that. In single core speed, it's pretty much neck and neck. Both units give a nice snappy feel in Windows. In multi-core, the Intel chip gets flogged thanks to a lower power limit and only having four cores. If you're looking for multi-core CPU performance, the HX90 has it in spades. This also helps with encoding videos as the 5900HX completes a task over 40% faster. Looking good so far, right? Well, now we hit the graphics benchmarks. The NUC 11 Enthusiast has an RTX 2060 mobile versus the integrated Vega graphics in the HX90, which gets completely owned. Over 73% decrease in DX11 and over 78% decrease in DX12. And that, my friends, is the HX90's weak point. If you want to play the latest games or do other GPU intensive workloads, you may want to look elsewhere. So, let's game on it! Valorant is an esports title with a very large FPS range, around 80 to 140 FPS. Forza Horizon 5 is playable, but that low detail is definitely not eye candy. Almost 60 FPS with Doom Eternal, but it doesn't look so nice. Elden Ring isn't playable at this resolution. It feels too much like some of that cinematic gameplay. Oh, 
With God of War, I enabled FSR 2.0 Ultra Performance Mode, which looks terrible, and the frame rate still isn't anything to write home about. I'm impressed how nice Cyberpunk still looks at low detail, but it runs at a snail's pace. Okay, let's try some emulators. Wii U is the starting point, and Splatoon almost manages to hold a locked 60fps. Breath of the Wild is just over 30fps. Not great, but it's playable. I also tried the Nintendo Switch version using Yuzu, and it was too slow. But Metroid Dread was a locked 60fps. PlayStation 3 is a mixed experience. I dropped the resolution to native 720p, as 1080p caused hard crashes. Heavenly Sword is one of the easier games to emulate, and almost hits 60fps. Motorstorm Pacific Rift runs terribly. Resistance Fall of Man kept crashing on the intro cutscene, so I tried the sequel, and it also runs poorly. So overall, apart from the easier to emulate games, PS3 is too much for this integrated GPU. Other systems will play just fine though. The CPU temperature maxed out at 87C at 21 ambient with a stress test, and no thermal throttling was recorded. The fan noise isn't bad either. At idle, it's practically silent, so I'll just show you how it sounds under load. I don't like that fan pitch, but at least it's not loud. Power draw is very low at idle. When the 8 cores were pushed, the peak was 126 watts from the wall. Overall, I'd say Mini's forum has done a really good job with the HX90. The liquid metal shenanigans have also been cleared up. It works well, and has plenty of ports. The Mini is only let down by the integrated graphics. It isn't super small, but I like the vertical stand, which decreases the amount of disk space needed. All that being said, the Azeroc Disk Mini X300 is a small DIY option, which takes up less volume and lets you add a desktop CPU. Pair it with an 8-core 5700G and Noctua cooler, and the price of that is comparable to the HX90. At least here in Oz. But the ports on the Azeroc are definitely lacking. Depending on your needs, either unit makes for a powerful mini PC that doesn't sound like a vacuum cleaner. Are you interested in the Mini's Forum HX90? Let me know in the comments. For more mini PC videos than you can handle, hit the subscribe button, and I'll see you later. Cheers!